All right, folks, it's bass action, back in action here. In this video, we are gonna work through some problems that involve solving, utilizing the circle equation. Um, up here again, just like in the previous video, we've got the equation for our circle and a little reminder that the equation for a circle, the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula are all essentially the same. So sometimes you'll see that I'm using the circle equation because that's what this section is about, but your brain might think about it in terms of distance or Pythagorean theorem, and that's still correct because it's essentially still even the exact same strategy. All right, let's jump into our first example. Um, we want to find the area of the shaded region, and we're given that the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals 16. This part of the equation right here is telling us automatically that the center of this circle is at 0, 0. So you could draw in that x, y axis if you would like to do that. This other part here is telling us that the radius of our circle is a 4. So when we look at this, that means that the radius of the circle, this could be the radius of our circle, but this here could also be the radius of our circle, okay? So this is going to be a four, and that's going to be a more useful uh, radius for our circle than the other one. Now, when we're thinking about this shaded region, we want to think about this in terms of the area of the circle, because that's the larger object, minus the area of the square. Now, we're all pretty comfortable with the area of the square being this base times height, okay? So we're pretty good with looking with this base times height here. But what I want you to remember is that in your geometry days, you learned actually a second version um, of the equation for a square, and that was one half diagonal one times diagonal two, where the two diagonals are the same. Of course, we should remember that the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. If we remember those two formulas, then this problem is actually incredibly simple because the area for our circle is gonna be pi r squared, and we can immediately see that our radius is four, so that's gonna quick jump us to a 16 pi. And then if we remember this form for the square, we've got, we're gonna have our full diagonal here, that's gonna be a total of eight, so we're going to get a one half eight times eight, so that is of course gonna be 64 divided by two is gonna give us a nice 32, so we'll have a 16 pi, minus 32, I'm gonna leave myself a little gap there. Since we don't know our units, we're gonna label this as unit squared. Okay, so um, really the purpose of this video is to remind you of that second form for the area of a square. The next one is to write the equation for a circle given the endpoints of the diameter. So this is a great application for our distance and our midpoint formulas, okay? So when we've been reviewing distance and midpoint, this is a great review of it. The center of a circle is, of course, going to be our midpoint. So we're going to quick find our midpoint here. Remember, that's going to be our negative 3. I'm going to say minus 1 because it was plus the negative. And then a 7 minus 9 because it was plus our negative again. So the center of our circle is a negative 1, negative 1. Um, now, the um, radius of the circle, we could either use these two points here to find the radius, or we could find the distance between these two points and then cut it in half, okay, since this is going to be our whole diameter. Since our uh, center is a really nice number, then it doesn't really matter which one we use. So I'm going to choose to work with this negative 3, 7, and my negative 1, 1 for my um, radius. So my distance is going to equal my radius. Remind myself that I'm going to give myself a big square root. So I'm going to have a negative 3 plus a 1 quantity squared and a 7 plus a 1 quantity squared. And that's going to get me to my negative 3, uh, plus one is gonna be a negative two. I'm gonna square that, that's gonna give me four. My seven plus my one's gonna give me eight. I'm gonna square it and that's gonna get me a 64. So that gets me that my radius is a square root of 68. 
So we can jump into our equation for our circle. I'm just gonna kind of set up our format here because remember, it's always gonna look like that. We can drop in our radius. So our, or our center, I meant to say, is gonna become a plus one, because remember, it's minus the x coordinate and minus the y coordinate, so they're both gonna become plus ones. And then when we drop in the radius, we're gonna square that, so we're gonna write it as a nice 68, okay? Our next problem, this also touches back with some of the problems that we've been reviewing up until now. We want to write the equation for a circle and it's telling us our center. So that's kind of nice because it already gave us half of our answer. So if we want to write the equation for our circle, we can actually jump in to this part right away. X plus the three, because it was minus the negative. Remember it's a plus in the middle. Y minus seven, we want to subtract that coordinate and what we're now looking for is what is the radius squared. So we're gonna draw a quick little picture for ourselves to visualize what's happening on this problem. It says that our center is at a negative three, seven. So I don't need it to be to scale, I just need it to be generally in the right quadrant. So that's good enough for me. My center is at this negative three, seven, and then it's gonna tell me that it's gonna be tangent to this line y equals 11. So that means that I'm looking at a horizontal line and it's gonna be above where my center is here. So I'm actually gonna draw this a little bigger up here, extend that y axis. So somewhere up here, notice this is not to scale, I have this line y equals 11. So if my circle is supposed to be tangent to that, then what it means is it looks something like this. Okay, I don't need to really draw that picture, but what's happening here is that that's going to give me my radius. So the diff distance from this point to this uh, horizontal line is going to give me my radius of four. And then when I drop it in my equation, I'm gonna make sure to square it and I'm gonna enter a 16. Last example that we're going to look at is gonna require a little bit of work, and this one ties back to the first idea that I mentioned in the video, that some students' brains are gonna kinda of think about this in terms of distance formula. Some will maybe think even Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do it with the circle because, again, that's what the section's about. It wants us to find all the points, meaning there might be more than one, okay, that are gonna be on this line. Okay, so I'm gonna have this line x equals six. It tells me how far away they're going to be, and it tells me a particular point. So let's get this into a picture first and start to visualize what's happening here. So I'm gonna give myself a little x, y axis, and I'm going to plot my point 10, negative 12. Again, just needs to be in the right quadrant, 10, negative 12. And I'm going to have my line x equals 6. And I'm going to put that here. It also just needs to be somewhere positive. This is going to be at a 6. Okay. And I'm going to be looking for points that are on this line. So what this problem is wanting you to think about is that a circle is a set of points that are equidistant from a given point. So I could have a whole big circle that would look like this. And my circle then would intersect that vertical line twice. So what I'm effectively looking for are some points that are gonna be somewhere on this line. And I know that their distance is gonna be this five radical two. And since distance is always positive, it doesn't matter whether I go down to do that or up to do that. Now, what I also need to remember is that any point on this line is going to have the x value of 6, and it's going to have some other value for y. So let's take the pieces of this that we know already. What we can see is that we have a center, and this is effectively telling us the radius of our circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just the equation for a circle. x minus 10, quantity squared, plus y plus 12, remember I'm flipping those signs because the equation says it's written in the negative. And then on the right-hand side, 
I'm going to put this distance squared. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that I'm looking for this y value. So instead of like we did in the previous video where we were looking for an x or y intercept, I'm looking for a particular y value when the x value is something that I know. So this 6 is what's going to go in there. So now I'm going to say 6 minus 10 quantity squared plus y plus 12. I don't know what it is because I'm looking for it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square that radical over here, and that's going to mean 25 times 2. That's going to give me a nice 50. Now I can keep going. This is going to look very similar to what we did for the x and y intercepts. This is effectively a negative 4 squared. So that's going to give me 16, y plus 12, 50. Again, this should look very much like solving for the intercepts. I'm going to subtract that 16 from each side. It's going to give me a 34. And then remember, I am not going to expand this side. It's set up to solve by square roots. So that means that I'm going to have y plus 12 plus or minus square root of 34. Since it wanted specifically points, I'm going to write these as ordered pairs, the x-coordinate of 6 and the y-coordinate of a negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 34. And that would be our final answer. Okay, we're going to practice a whole lot more of these in class. If you've got some questions, go ahead and jot those down so that uh, you are ready to ask those questions in class. Take some time to reflect on the video before we come in to class because I know we've got a lot happening in this one.